Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Alicia and today I'm going to be showing with you how I use Anki. So I thought I'd break the video up into two different sections. The first one being when do I use Anki to revise as well as how I create the actual flashcards. So if you're only interested in a certain part, I'll leave all the timestamps in the description so you can skip around to whichever part suits you. So if you didn't know already, Anki is a flashcard program that uses space repetition and it has it coded into it. So you can create your flashcards and it's meant to help you effectively revise and memorize different parts of your content. As using Anki is a very active form of revision, I tend to use it a lot close to my final exams. If you've watched my Notion workspace video, you would have seen that I create flashcards using the toggle list function on that app to do active recall. However, after uploading that video, I got a lot of questions asking when do I use Notion versus when do I use Anki and why don't I use Anki instead of Notion since it has all the flashcard functions embedded into it already. So I thought I would just quickly touch upon that. The very simple answer to that is I find Anki can be very difficult to locate specific things I'm looking for, especially when you get towards the end of a subject and your Anki deck has like over 500 cards in it. It's really hard to find certain parts of the content and also get through all of it when there's so many different cards. But there are certain circumstances where I think Anki is a lot more useful. The main thing I use Anki for is studying for my practical exams. So for histology and anatomy, both subjects, I often have spot tests, which means I have to identify certain structures and link them to their function. As they're both image-based tests, being able to use the image occlusion tool on Anki is really helpful. And also when you're trying to study for identification tests, you kind of want things to be jumbled up. So you're not really given that initial prompt that you wouldn't be given in an exam. Just before I get into explaining how I create my flashcards, I want to give a quick disclaimer and say that this is a very basic overview of the functions on Anki. The app does have a lot of capability to do different things, but to be completely honest, I really don't know how to do it. So these are the fundamentals of the app, which you can still create flashcards and it can still be just as effective as it has been in my revision. So the first thing you want to do is create a deck and then title it whatever you want to. I usually create one per subject. so. What I've written here is just the title of the subject. Now the three main card types that I use are the basic, close and image occlusion. The first one I'll be walking you through is the basic flashcard type. Whilst I'm making my flashcards, I'll usually open up my lecture notes in a split screen so it's easy to reference and I can screenshot different images when needed. The basic flashcard type on Anki is pretty much a basic flashcard. So you have a front and a back. The front is where you'd put your question and then the back is where you'd put the answer. This type is really good for definitions if you want to outline different processes, mainly things that are just to do with the text. Just like a basic flashcard, when you go to test yourself, you click the spacebar and it will reveal the answer to the question. The second type of flashcard you can make is the close type. So this is kind of like fill in the blanks. Within the box that says text, you just type in the information you want to put in. So you can type this in or you can copy and paste it from your notes. And then the part you want to hide for the fill in the blanks, you just highlight that certain word and then press shift command C and then it will block out that part that's in the brackets. So when you come to test yourself, it'll be that part in blue that you have to answer. You just press the spacebar and it will reveal the blank. As I mentioned before, if you want to do it a lot quicker, you can just open up the lecture slides directly and then copy and paste the text in and then carry out the same shift command C and it will block out certain words if you want to just test yourself with fill in the blanks. For each fill in the blank, if you look at the number that comes up next to the C, that creates a different card per fill in the blank. So if you want all of it to appear at the same time, then you can just change all the numbers to one and it'll create one card that the answers all appear at the same time. With this one, when you go to review the card, the blue brackets will appear all like this. And then once you press the space bar, all the answers pop up. The last flashcard type I'm showing you is hands down the one I use the most often, which is image occlusion. I believe this is an additional plug into Anki you have to download, but it's completely free. So I'll try to leave the link with the instructions as to how to install it in the description. Once you've installed it, it's actually really simple to use. The way I use the image occlusion tool is I'll just go back to the basic card type 
and then I'll screenshot the image from my lecture notes or if it's from Google, I'll just drag it in. Once you've dragged in the image you want to occlude, right click on the image and it'll come up with a few options. What you wanna press is occlude image. That should bring up a separate window like this. And then if it hasn't already, you wanna click the rectangle tool, which should be on the left hand side. And then on each label you want to test yourself on, you can just drag the rectangle over that text. Once you've done that for all your labels, on the bottom there's two options. One will say hide all guess one, and then another one says hide one guess one. In most cases, I'll just use the hide all guess one, again, so I'm not given any prompts that might help me to deduce the answer. As you can see here, hide all guess one just means that all of the boxes are covered, and then the one you need to guess is in red whereas hide one guess one is all the labels appear besides the one you want to answer. In the example I just showed you, that was with an image that already had labels on it. If for instance you want to use your own image that maybe doesn't have any labels on it, you can add them in yourself. I just use preview to do this. Once you've opened up your image in preview, you can just add text to it and then draw arrows and lines. And then one thing that really helps is if you make the background of the text white, so then the label just appears a lot clearer on the image. And then you just repeat the same process of image occlusion and you can hide the labels you've created with that image. Another alternative is if you've already annotated them in your lecture notes, say for example on your iPad, then you can just screenshot your notes on your laptop. When you want to study the flashcards, all you do is click on the deck on the main screen. As each of the flashcards appear, you just press the space bar to reveal the answer to whatever question pops up. And then one thing you'll notice about Anki is once you've revealed the answer, at the bottom there's three options. You can either click again, good or easy. This is just a difficulty scale that helps to code in the space repetition. So if you found something hard, maybe you didn't know how to answer it, you want to click again. If you found it okay, you can click good or if you found it really easy, you can just press the easy one obviously. So then the more difficult you found a certain card, it'll pop up more frequently so you can learn it. With the image occlusion, you'll notice that once you've revealed the answer, if you've done the hide or guess one, there's an option to toggle the masks at the end. This really helps if maybe you got something wrong and you want the other labels to help you derive the answer, then you just press out and it will remove all the boxes. The great thing about Anki as well is you can download the app on other devices. So say for example, on your iPad, you want to put all the flashcards you made on your laptop on there so you can test yourself on the go. All you have to do is press synchronize on the bottom right hand corner of the screen and that will download all of your cards so it syncs with the flashcards on your laptop. I think all you have to do is make sure that you have created an account with Anki and use the same email. This is really helpful if, say for example, you're commuting somewhere, maybe you're on a really long train ride and you have nothing to do, you can just whip out your Anki flashcards and go through them. So that about wraps up everything to do with Anki and how I use it. As I said before, I am by no means an expert at this app. I still have a lot to learn about it, but if you're new to the app and found it really confusing, just like me when I first used it, hopefully this is somewhat helpful and you can implement using Anki into your own revision. But with that being said, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel down below if you wanna see more content like this as it really supports my channel. If you have any other video ideas or suggestions you want me to film, please leave it in the comments down below and I will go through them. But that's about everything. So I hope you have a lovely day and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.